I'll call the order the Monday, September 26th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, first up this evening is uh, Arlington Center for the Arts fundraising update. So Hi. You folks can come forward and introduce okay. yourselves, please. Sure. Come on up. <clears throat> So, hi everybody. Hi. Uh, thanks for having us. I'm Linda Schumacher, the Executive Director of the Arlington Center for the Arts, and it's nice to see you again. Um, with me tonight are Patrick Guthrie from the ACA Board of Directors. He is our um, architect on the board and working with us really closely on issues of space planning and construction planning uh, for the project. And Lisa Padula is working with ACA on fundraising and the capital campaign. So we're actually a little early with this update. The MOU, um, if you remember, was, was um, asking for quarterly reports, the first of which would be on October 15th. But Jenny and I have been meeting monthly, and it sounded like the October 17th meeting was going to be full of other stuff, and this would be probably a better time to just update you on where we're at. Uh, so some quick points, and then we're really interested in your any um, thoughts and questions for us. Um, fundraising progress to date, as you may remember, we had set a 130,000 target for July, uh, where are we? January 31st, uh, 2017. And as of today, we're halfway there to that goal. As of today, we've raised just um, 63,500 in cash and um, written but pledges uh, uh, during this kind of quiet Phase, and we're going to continue doing outreach to individual donors to, to build that amount in this quiet phase as we move towards the official public phase um, with projected launch date um, of October 27th. So Thursday night after special town meeting was over, um, Jenny and I worked to confirm that that was the date that would work for her and for the town manager and it works for the ACA board, but we just wanted to make sure that it worked for this group, or at least so that some members of this group would also be able to be there. We're envisioning something on the steps, front steps of the um, central school, and a kind of official symbolic cutting of the ribbon to launch a public, <laughs> not so quiet phase of the capital campaign. So I'm really hoping that you or some of you can be there for that. Um, as we work towards the $130,000 goal in January and then the bigger goal uh, for the project as a whole, we've got a strategy with a combination of individual donor outreach, business, foundation, um, and some events planning, and we wanted to get some event dates on your calendar, um, uh, which I think you've got the, uh, the flyer there, which shows the th our three major fundraisers of the year in November. Um, which will be a co-themed movie um, preview at the Regent Theatre done by uh, Eric Stangy, our Arlington's maybe most famous film, filmmaker. Um, this movie is going to be on uh, the American Master Series on PBS, and he's going to give Arlington a first sneak peek um, at that film in November. And then to follow that, two events, uh, one in January, which will be kind of like an arts ball gala at Town Hall, and then in April, our Blues Apocalypse, if you don't know about this, is an event we'll be doing for the third time this year. It's sold out over at the Gibbs Building in the last two years, so we're going to bring it to Town Hall this year. And those will be the three kind of pillars of our event, uh, big public event fundraising over the year. And then in addition to that, we're scheduling a series of smaller kind of community outreach and neighborhood house parties to bring people together, introduce them to the project, invite them to participate in the campaign. Uh, as they are able, we're also working on um, mailing, a direct mailing in advance of the ribbon cutting in October um, and a number of other avenues. Uh, the, we're pinning our biggest hopes uh, for foundation grant support on the Mass Cultural Council. Jenny and I went last month to visit with the Mass Cultural Council, um, the administrator of the Cultural Facilities Fund grant. And if you remember, that's a one-to-one -one match uh, for projects just like this one. And while it is a competitive pool, and we know that they get a lot more requests than they can fund, I think Jenny and I both came away from that meeting feeling like we've got a project that really hits the center of the target for what they're looking for, and we have a good chance to, to, to put together a really competitive application for that money. Um, so that's sort of 
a thumbnail on where we're at with the fundraising to date and fundraising planning. Uh, in terms of the project planning, uh, we also wanted to, to let you know that we have officially engaged Pink, Pink and Company um, as our owner's project manager. We're not the owner, so I'm not sure what the right word for that is, but the project manager. We own the project. Um, <laughs> we own the project, okay. For planning construction and for, for the move, and we're in the process now of working with Pink to draft up the RFP for uh, design and architect services. Uh, I put this all together in a just one page report for you along with this capital campaign overview, which you see that, that you already have. But um, that is where we're at so far. And we really welcome any thoughts, questions, or comments. Sounds to me like you're right on <coughs> track, ahead of track. I'm impressed with your fundraising so far, so let's get some in. Um, on the uh, cultural facilities fund grant, so the letter of intent is due in November, final proposal in January, and then typically like a spring funding, spring, spring notification? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, it's not ideal in terms of no. the cycle for our, our project, but I think the way we're thinking about that is, you know, we get this three-tier yep. estimate, so... Um, Bring you up to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And, and then there wasn't one of the points of feedback for the Cultural Facilities Fund grant is that so many of their projects are, they grant, and then there's still a fundraising process. For us, we're going to basically have to be shovel-ready. Mm. Uh, so. That helps us, I think, in, in their vetting in their vetting process. So, well, it's a tight schedule for us. I think it's also beneficial um, as they are evaluating this project against others. It sounds like many successful projects get the MCC money and then start yeah. their massive right. fundraising. So we'll do it the other way. Yeah. And if anything, if we get that grant, it'll trigger up you know, our ability to meet and hopefully exceed. Or it is. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. All right. Thank you. Great. All right. Very much. Thank I think we're all familiar with Vision 2020. Basically, as part of the um, organization, we have a grant. I have a designee, but it's designated through the AOB. And then, so you technically have to appoint the person. So I can find somebody and bring them to you, but you have to appoint mm -hmm. them. So that's what this process is. So okay. Jenny is here to uh, introduce herself and maybe talk about her interest in Vision 2020. Okay. Hi. Questions? I'm Jen Toole. Um, I'll just go by John to make it a little easier. Um, I bought a home in Arlington about two years ago. It was my first home. I'm about to start raising a family here. And um, I grew up in Brookline and lived in Cambridge for many years, but knew almost nothing about Arlington when I moved here. And um, I love it and have gotten involved in the community in many different ways um, since living here. And I've been attending the Vision 2020 meetings um, since last spring. And um, I thought it was a great way to sort of get more involved um, in the very robust uh, activities that happen in Arlington. And I'm very interested in kind of um, you know, thinking about the town goals and, and what the future of the town looks like. Um, I currently work in PR. I've been working in PR for about a decade, so I have uh, kind of events, marketing, public relations background and experience. But prior to that, um, I worked at uh, Brookline Booksmith, which is a thriving independent bookstore in Brookline, and I've been a staunch supporter of local independent businesses for a long time, and it's really uh, something that's very important to me. And in talking with Julie, the, the board cha or the chair of Vision 2020, 
And obviously, we you know that they, uh, the empty storefronts are a big issue in town. Um, she thought that that would be a good fit for me to start to explore that issue. So I have jumped into that, you know, attending the um, Support Arlington Heights uh, forum that happened in late July and getting involved with the Support Arlington Center and, um, you know, keeping up on all of those issues. I know now it's an issue with the town manager and that there's, there's a lot happening on that front. And we're trying to figure out how Vision 2020 can work with all of these groups and you know facilitate um, these groups working together uh, amongst each other to um, help tackle this issue. Great. We're glad to have you. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Great. Nice to see some different faces. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I know everybody seems to know each other, and I'm still like I need an org chart. I'm still learning. I'm in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, actually, yeah, I'm still. Um, any questions about me or my background or what what I plan to do with the group? No, from my perspective, I think I think if 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 you can concentrate on exactly what you're you're talking about, that'd be great mm -hmm. because I think I think we do have some um, challenges uh, with respect to that. So that yeah. sounds really nice to me. Great. Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat all the time, and I've been here so long that I still don't know all the committees mm -hmm. and what everybody does. And I think it's great, you know, just don't worry about that. Just <laughs> learn as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And if you learn about it, could you tell me to? Yeah. <laughs> I know there's so many great, and they have uh, committees like the Conservation Committee and so forth, and they all overlap. So yes. we all have this common overlapping mission. So it's good to, for you to be here and keep in touch. and all that kind of thing, um, that will help everything, reinforce everything you're doing. Great. So, welcome. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Right. welcome. Okay. Have fun. Entertain a motion, I suppose. I'll move to appoint uh, Jen Tool uh, to uh, be the ARB designator <coughs> Vision 2020 Standing Committee. Yes. Is that right? Standing Committee. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Next, uh, uh, binder in front of all of us is the application for the comprehensive permit for Thorndike Place, which is uh, the 40 project currently pending. We've been asked to provide a comment letter to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we were all asked to provide comments to Jenny earlier in the week, so. Uh, if you want to bring us up to speed yeah. and talk about what's so, next. Actually, I'm going to hand it over to Laura, who is going to outline sort of the process, where we're at, summarize some of the comments that we've already received, and then I'm actually going to type a bit because of the timing of this. We have to get these comments to them by tomorrow um, for their meeting. So, so um, the town's review process begins tomorrow, September 27th, at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we expect the ZBA tomorrow to say that um, they are that that the town is not subject to 40B because we have 1.5 percent of our land area in affordable housing. But regardless, the hearing gets opened and the process begins until uh, the review goes to the state DHCD. So there could be two public hearings. There would definitely be one, but there could be two nights of public hearing before um, the clock stops while that review happens at the state. Um, so I'm sorry, is one public hearing tomorrow night? Yes, that is, so there will be comment. Uh, they won't just say, we're not subject to it, blah, blah, blah. They'll actually have the public hearing as well. Um, well, they will accept the comments from the department. I don't okay. know if they'll have testimony. I don't, I okay. don't really okay. know okay. I just what curious. is going to okay, we, we do, we have an understanding that they're going to open up the hearing tomorrow, invite the applicant to make a presentation, Okay. open it up for public comment, and then talk about, you know, probably continue the hearing. Continue it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. thanks. Um, so the comments, the, the ZBA asked a number of town departments and boards for comments. Um, they basically were looking for if they're missing information and um, is your board or department interested in um, having a peer review of the information that's submitted. Um, they heard from the Conservation Commission, the Board of Health, Transportation Advisory Committee, Fire Chief, Town Engineer, Open Space Committee and Inspectional Services. And um, the ARB will be the, the last, um, so that'll be eight comment letters altogether. 
Um, you know, if normally this size project would be something that you would review, and so um, you have sort of a unique um, position because you have much more skills in um, in reviewing larger projects and more more important projects. The DBA generally um, reviews smaller projects, so it's really um, you really can you can have a, a, as big or a small role as you want in terms of like coming back and seeing different pieces of it along the way. And also because the planning department is kind of managing the process, we can, we'll know when important things are, um, you know, the timing. So uh, we were going to suggest that um, you look at design, the affordable housing, traffic and access, although TAC has done a very rigorous review of their traffic study so I don't think you have to get into the details of, um, you know, streets and, and intersections, but maybe to talk about broader um, transportation demand management or something um, along those lines. And then the wetlands, which again, the Conservation Commission did a very rigorous review, but um, you might have some interest in what will, what, how will the public access um, you know, will there be public access to that area and how will it be controlled and who's going to take care of it and stuff like that. So um, I don't think you have to worry about the wetlands protection issue. That seems to be well covered. But the kinds of things that you usually review in a project, which would be um, how, how is the public going to be taken care of here. And, and um, so that's, that's a, just a, wanted to make that framework for you. And just to add on to this so and many of your comments followed in these four categories wetlands was the first one traffic and access was the second the third was design and then the fourth is affordable housing um, if there's anything else that we missed in terms of categories that you want to talk about you know we can we can kind of organize this whatever makes the most sense um, I'm sorry what was the second design so in design I guess the, the question would be there it I mean I guess we're talking about massing as well as mechanicals and stuff like that because I think this was sorely lacking on, on mechanicals, et cetera. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we said, we suggest full-size plans are needed, key dimensions, building sections, proposed materials, architectural site plan, I can include massing and mechanicals. Yeah, mechanicals especially because, I mean, they're very close to the um, neighborhood over here. And I know yeah. we've taken a lot of time. Uh, with respect to generators and when generators are going to be on and off, and, and you think about the the Brigham among others, right? I mean, moving that generator took us two meetings, <laughs> so um, so really the mechanicals are, okay. are are key. Okay. I mean, my my major concern was uh, the affordable housing and modern moderate income and market rate housing and how that all into play. So yeah, I absolutely like to have a hand in reviewing that as, as those steps come through. Um, design we talked about, and then I'm also concerned about traffic, egress, um, and then impacts on Route 2. Impacts with Route 2 specifically, um, with some of the projects that are happening on the other side of Route 2, and how this might affect that and vice versa, both with traffic and with water flow. Overflow on Route 2? Well, where where the water is going to go, just yeah. Andy can probably describe what I'm talking about better, but uh, okay. it's the same idea. Um, <clears throat> LF Brook, and then um, I don't know if this is for us to talk about or Concom or ZBA, but one of the things that I'm concerned about is its impact on the bike path, bikeway, um, and then some other safety concerns that go in there. I know that that's been a long. Uh, running discussion about that particular area, particularly uh, given there's kind of a tensity that's propped up, propped up in the area over the years. Um, I'd kind of like to know how they're going to deal with that and where they intend to, what they intend to do about safety issues and how they intend to uh, manage the displacement of the people that are living there. Actually, just, well, can we take the first comment yeah. about the bike path, impact on the bike path? Can you just explain a little bit more about that? Sure. I, I mean, I'd just like to see if they're going to make any improvements to, to bike access there to um, connect the neighbor, the new neighborhood to the bike path. Um, plans for that. Okay. For the new housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two bike paths. The um, encampment is actually to be addressed by a committee 
okay. that has yet to be completely formed. Okay. And that is that's actually a directive from town meeting, annual town meeting. You might remember that. I'm not sure. That was that was talked about in annual mm -hmm. town. <laughs> the timing is strange, but we have not yet to form that okay. committee. And once it gets started, that's supposed to be addressing that particular issue. But it's worth noting, yeah. perhaps. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the impact, are you concerned about too many people using the bike way, or are you concerned what it, what exactly? Well, I want to know. <clears throat> I want to know how they're going to connect it, what they're going to do. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they, they, I, they, I suppose the additional <laughs> use of the bike way should be addressed to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and then along that, as far as you mentioned, transportation demand management, how they might use it to their advantage, in some way, because of the amount of traffic that's expected to be added there. <coughs> into those neighborhoods. Uh, that. Ken? I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach. I'd I like to get more information in regards to the wetlands. Um, there's existing wetlands there, and they're, they're going to go ahead and modify that and I believe they, I'm not sure, but I'm, um, there's not enough information here uh, to say, you know, do they exceed um, some sort of upset limit where they have to go beyond and go to uh, Army Corps engineers. I believe that once you go over a certain threshold, there's a review process. And have we looked into that uh, review process? Um, the Conservation Commission is well aware of the requirements, and they have they they wrote a very long letter. Okay, so I, I didn't see that, so I'm just right. I have that not up. shown you every letter. Okay. And then um, the other part of it was they said they were going to do modifications to improve flow from the, um, the wetlands area to a brook on the Creek Two. Well, does that create more downstream uh, issues later on? Uh, I just not enough. I can't get I can't get my hands around this now. Um, maybe it's, it's already been handled in other departments, but I just I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that's one of the concerns I have too. That I talked about as far as where does all this water go from the wetlands? How do you displace it somewhere where it's not flooding everyone in the neighborhood? Yeah. I mean, there was enough mass there to you know have some sort of drainage, but now that there's reduction in that. You know, it, it goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's in the floodplains, and I believe, I'm not sure where, but I just remember reading somewhere that Cambridge had commissioned a study on uh, stormwater runoff and floodplains, and, and the numbers were larger than what they're, they're projecting right now, and has that been taken into account? Uh, it's not enough information there that I, right. I would rather, if, if the town's already, um, aware of this and, and, and intention to it, that's fine. I'm just commenting on what I was given and it just doesn't seem to be. Uh, I think that might be an area that we would say that some peer review would be I would helpful highly, because it might even be more sophisticated than anyone in the town really can yes. analyze. Yeah, I would highly recommend if we can get a third party independent reviewer that you know, actually has expertise in this area. Right. Um, to take a study of this or review what they have done uh, on that. Um, um, I think um, some of Andy's comments that I actually saw were actually pretty, um, applies pretty good. And I'm going to let Andy go over those stuff, so I'm not going to cover those, some of those similar issues. So that, those are okay. just my main concerns about the wetlands and all this. Okay. Mike. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, I, I agree with some other comments that I made and saw, or that were made and saw, I saw, uh, with respect to materials and, you know, um, uh, hands on the design itself. I mean, these, these are not the best looking buildings we've ever seen uh, built in our town. Um, and uh, uh, and so, so from that perspective, I, I'd like to understand that. From the mechanicals perspective, that really is important. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I would uh, ask about is, uh, I, I do see that they're having 
I think 304 parking spaces, some underneath. I think it must be underneath. Like, I can't really tell where they all are. Um, that's a little bit of a, a mystery. Um, and then, as far as massing is concerned, I might be wrong, but really it's this one kind of sketch, if you will, from one porch is all we're really getting from a massing perspective from the neighborhood. This is, this is woefully inadequate um, as far as, you know, where is this, what is this? It says Dorothy Road of proposed townhouses. I mean, we really should have along the way. That, that massing is all along Dorothy Road. We really need to understand what that would look like. We need to be able to comment on it uh, better. So I, I'd certainly want to understand that um, better and certainly have a lot better than one. Um, I think there's like one little thing where they, they show a, a tip of it too. This is what it would look like over the wetlands. Uh, I'm not buying that either. But, um, but the other... Um, uh, so it's massing, what was it? Massing. Unmassing, did you also, I, I didn't. Is there another thing? Were you also going to say that you wanted to see what the large building looked like from Dorothy Road? Yes, yeah, yeah, you can just, oh, I know what I was going to say. You can okay. just see it, see it right there. Yeah. They've they got just like a little tiny thing, but, uh, I, you know, they've got it on an angle. If you look at how the sketch is done, it's on an angle, so this would automatically block it. If, if you're right here, I'm guessing that thing is looming up there. And the other thing is, is you're seeing some nice full-grown trees here. I don't think we've seen a landscape plan um, that is uh, definitive enough to say that they are going to plant trees that big. Those, that, I mean, that is not something we typically see in uh, a lot of the developments. So uh, that type of screening, et cetera, we need to understand as far as, uh, once again, massing is concerned. Um, the other thing that, and I, I must admit, I. Maybe it's in here somewhere, but I didn't see it. Is the um, and, and maybe this is only for the state in a 40B, so I don't know. But as far as affordable housing is concerned, obviously we'd love it to be perpetual, but I know 40B limits you on as far as that is concerned. But where is the affordable housing going to be? Um, you know, obviously we want it to be throughout the um, uh, throughout the project. We don't want it just to be in one spot. Um, similarly, and I come back to parking on this, because this was a big thing up at, uh, uh, up at Sims, is I want to understand where all the parking is for affordable housing, uh, because that too should be integrated into the project as a whole, mm -hmm. and not just separate. So, um, you know, our inclusive zoning requires that, you know, every, uh, that the affordable units and the affordable parking and everything else be just part of the project. And like I said, maybe I'm missing it here, but I'm not seeing statements to that effect within here. Right. So for me, that's a, that's a really important thing and one I would stress if we were reviewing this. So those, those are my big items. I mean, you know, and that once again, it's not even to talk about the aesthetically blah of, of what they've kind of come, come at us with on these kind of houses. Yeah. I mean, they did a nice pretty sketch and they couldn't even make it look good. So, um, so it's disappointing. Um, I think yeah. it had some elevations, Mike. Uh, but they weren't. Of the bigger building, which is cool. I yeah. agree. Like yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. definitely do. They definitely do. Um, the and it was no better. As, no, it, it's worse, actually. Yeah. But. yeah, it was certainly no better. I, can, I know that. Yeah, yeah, over here. And, and, and actually, so as far as masking is concerned, they did do this, too. You can see they've got existing home, Dorothy Street, townhouses, and East Building. But they don't, they don't really, they still don't give you the sense of what it's going to look like. And, and here are the elevations over here on the townhomes. I mean... So would you like an opportunity to see the design again or possibly meet with the developer? I would, just I talk would, about the design at some well, future time. Interrupt. I would love the opportunity to do so, just just to make this make these buildings uh, nicer looking. Yeah, than what they have right here. I mean, this is. I mean, typically we'd be we'd have the people in here. Obviously, mm -hmm. the you know from our perspective, the frustrating part is you have them in here. They're describing it. You ask these questions, you get answers, and you know that's not something we can I guess do in this situation or or necessarily force. But um, those mm -hmm. are the categories mm -hmm. I'd like. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so in this situation, what we're doing is we're, we're outlining where we are, see are the issues, the potential sure. issues, and then we're also suggesting where we think peer review would be necessary. So okay. one of the peer review consultants would be, you know, clearly for develop, uh, for the, you know, how the wetlands are dealt with. 
yep. and the stormwater issues and those sorts of things. But if you are talking about design issues to the extent that you are, maybe there's an opportunity to get a okay, great. peer review on that. Perfect. And that could be the kind of thing that we talk with either the peer review consultant or the developer. Or both. And possibly maybe one yes. member of the board could sit with us with the peer reviewer, if, the, if that's okay for the VA. Because they, really, they don't have design. Anyway, that's what I had. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, Thank just you. go back to I think it's sure. sort of on a lot of the economies so far, but the moderate income or middle income housing, that would be for there's affordable home ownership and there's also affordable rental units. Are you talking about both? Yes, yes. Okay. To have middle income, you're saying? Or, is uh, middle moderate. I think I, is that the same thing to, I'm trying to understand what it meant. One said moderate. One of you said moderate. I think we're talking about the same thing. Middle. You're saying not just affordable, yes. but one. So the experience that we had both at Sims and Brigham's is that the, not Brigham's, just Sims. Middle income rental is not a very desirable product. It's not low. It's not. It's too yeah, I didn't mention. I didn't mention but, that um, because that's not something high on my list because of that. I right. remember that was actually a detriment to. But there are these. Um, the townhouses that are going to be condos, mm -hmm. um, it would be great to have one or two of those as well. Mm -hmm. That's more of As middle income. income. Okay. Yeah. One or two yeah. middle income. That's more of a thinking of the rental ones. But yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. I mean, I'd like to see more townhouses, to be honest with you, than rental units, but <coughs> I think the ship is sailing. Is that worth sailing. saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth saying, I think. Sure, we can say that. Yeah, I, you know, <clears throat> I'll say this now. Thinking about it, I would like to see more townhouses, and I think it is worth saying. I think um, more townhouses opened up to affordable and moderate income, which we just discussed, is far more valuable to this town and addresses many of the problems that this board has been trying to solve for the last year that we've been talking about with the zoning issues and with the, the housing production plan, with the master plan, than adding in 220 rental units, 219 rental units. So it's, it's more townhouses for sale? Yes. The for sale piece. So for sale piece okay. that I think addresses some of the, so many of the discussions that we've had in these meetings over the last year and beyond. <coughs> How many are there? There are six. Six. Twelve. Well, well, six well there's six twelve buildings units. but twelve units. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, are, they I, all, are they all for sale or are they rental too? I think the townhouses are all for sale. Yeah. So it's a lot like Sims. So they are all for yeah. sale. Yeah. How it's a lot like Sims. Sims. But I don't know how you get more of those in there and still satisfy what of your requirements to the letter. We don't have to figure yeah. that out. But I don't, yeah. it's up to them yeah. to figure yeah. out. Yeah. 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 I, just, I think, that, I think that that's something that's important to come from this board, okay. yeah. uh -huh. given, given the things that we've been trying to address. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, well, I've said it, but more, more for sale units are key here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one last point. From a peer review perspective, it had, well, I guess typically we ask a real, a real estate professional to tell us about the marketability of the different size uh, units and that type of thing as well, I think. Is that right? I mean, we well, certainly did it Sims, we when we were talking about Sims. Had more of a stake in Sims. Yeah, definitely. I guess well, it's up to them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay, fair enough. I guess I'd still love to understand that. Yeah, I think I'd like to see a, a, a long-term study. You mean that. like their affirmative fair housing <laughs> marketing plan? <laughs> that's basically what they're going to have. That's that's the plan that that outlines sort of what for is the, the market housing. for the affordable units. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they will have to have a market. They have to have. Is a, but they right? haven't said anything thing. about what the prices are going well, to. We be don't have a lot of that information. <laughs> Well, they ought to be they able to tell. Know, they, yeah. They've done a pro forma for this thing, so they can <coughs> tell us yes. what their estimation of the marketing of this thing is. Absolutely. So we can ask for pricing and market knowledge, if you'd like me to add that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think I've got affordable housing and design and wetlands pretty much covered, and traffic. Can we talk about the parking? Traffic and access. Transportation to manager. TDM. Okay. So um, it's they're they're touting that they're right by Alewife and that there's going to be a lot of people who use Alewife and the bike path, but yet there's fairly high parking. There's yeah. a lot of parking. One point four. So per. Um, we've been thinking about maybe seeing if they could beef up the connections to the bikeway and have bike facilities, um, indoor storage and stuff, and have less parking perhaps, which would 
help be more pervious pavement, not pavement, more unpaved land, if there wasn't as much parking needed. What about plans for a shuttle to and from Hill Life? Is that it's so close? <laughs> well, there's this other thing. There's this pedestrian bridge. Oh, that ugly one. That's yeah. terrible. <laughs> I know, it's dangerous. but I think it's even, it would be even closer to walk that way than mm -hmm. on the bike path. I think path. you're right. Yeah, it would be. As some sort of new pedestrian. Yeah. Who, who owns the that? You know who owns that? Game. And then you walk along that. If you know it's that bridge there, is that uh, yes, the state? Dot. Yeah, oh, Mass Dot, yeah. yeah. You know, <coughs> as far as the parking is concerned, though, I guess one of my worries would be is if you don't have enough here that they're going to go park out in the street, mm -hmm. in the in the different streets. I guess there's no overnight, so yeah, that might not be as big an issue. But I think these people are already dealing with, if I'm not mistaken, kind of commuter uh, parking mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And all you need is yeah, just, you know, so so I guess I'd, I'd love to, I'd just love to, talk about the parking a little bit more and understand mm -hmm. it better because mm -hmm. I'm not I think the demand management makes sense and everything else I'm not I'm not saying no to that but my fear is is if you take away the parking then you're gonna put even more pressure on that neighborhood mm -hmm. that it just doesn't need okay so more information justify the yeah the parking yeah okay well and I don't think I don't think the amount of parking should um, should decrease their efforts for the demand, you know, uh, the demand management. Yeah, I think they're. In, I think they, they can be together. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. Well, for the tenants, if it's if they only have one space, they might do a zip car for their second car or something like that, yeah. rather than buying yeah. a second car. Agreed. Zip car can be hard to come by. Agreed. <clears throat> Although we did ask for the traffic study to be updated as well. Did you? Yes, right. Yep. Did, did we gave our comments. I know that. I don't know if I should go through, repeat them, so you better go. I think I'm okay. I think I have all of your comments folded into here at this point. I definitely tried to them. just be explicit about providing adequate plans, elevations, and such. Yeah. Materials, landscape, generally the drawings that they say, yeah, I could barely read them. Yeah, yeah they're too yeah. small. So, right. I guess it, the bigger picture then is back to the, someone who's saying, is, is this the requirements of their application, particularly in terms of design? Is it like a special permit that we look at, and where we have certain uh, written requirements for elevations at a certain scale, we have a model, if it's a large project. Um, those things are done for a reason because it helps everybody understand the project three dimensionally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I wonder whether, um, uh, that's a question to you, I guess, you guys, is, are, mm -hmm. are they required to provide that or are they going to go on an eight and a half by 11 mm -hmm. faded Xerox? No, I think they'll have to give better plans, more detailed plans, and full-size plans. But um, it's a negotiation. So if the board says that they want a model, it's quite likely they could get a model. I think they should. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. to address all I these I think they should get the re as close to the requirements that we have as a special permit. Mm -hmm. It's a large project, and it's obviously a high-focus and important project to the town. Mm -hmm. So to have less than we have for a normal... Yeah. A special permit. I mean, I thought this was a preliminary thing where we're talking about issues that we want brought up. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're saying this is all you're getting, no. then I should raise no, no. A, a major flag right now that this is, I guess I'm echoing what Mike said, this is woefully inadequate yeah, to this, review a project right now. This is the initial step. Okay. Yeah, there's many more steps to come. And, and we are not the first group to comment on the woefully inadequate design elements and plans. Okay. Including the building inspector. Yes. No. Yeah, they're hard to read. It's hard to understand. They're it's hard to get the context. They're all the things. Exactly. What's the difference they're between them? Exactly. Yeah, there's we very don't have little to speculate. We have, a list of, we have requirements that are written right. into our bylaws. Mm -hmm. So this isn't like a crap shoot here. We know what we want. Right. And usually we hold these more important, bigger projects to a higher mm -hmm. degree of requirement or whatever. Right. The right word is. Okay. Um, I think that the, I mean, I went to town on the park, on the parking and the access because I think 
I don't know, I just live in Arlington and Lake Street is, is a big issue. And Lake Street is part of the Route 2 corridor and a lot of new projects have come about and I see a date of 2014 on the yeah. traffic impact it's assessment crazy. study <clears throat> and I, I would want to see a lot more on that and I'd like to have TAC present to us their, their uh, assessment of that. Um, I'm talking about tax. So I can, I can give you, I can send you tomorrow, I can send you their letter. They wrote a three page letter. Good. Um, that is in great detail. I don't, I do have it. Just so go they, through the bullet they, points. Did they perform a traffic count? They did not perform a traffic count, but they told the developer that they should look at certain intersections that they didn't look at. Um, there was a one thing was they were, they were relying on a right turn off of Lake Street onto Little John Street, which has is no a no entrance street. So there were they found a lot of problems. Um, <clears throat> they didn't put the the traffic study didn't provide an appendix which has the traffic count data in it, and so the uh, TAC wanted to see that information as well. Um, did they ask for an update of the? Traffic impact yeah, assessment. Yeah, they did because okay. there's some new developments yeah, since sure. that time, or at least proposals. Um, queuing on Lake Street at Brooks Ave and at the Minuteman Bikeway wasn't looked at at all. The transit mode share they projected 28 percent. They wanted more information about the parking, also, like compared to other developments with similar access. Was the good number of 28 percent would take the public transit, or could it be higher here? Um, <clears throat> can, they wanted to see how the project connected both to transit and to the bike path. The, another thing about the site plan is it's very constrained. It doesn't show how yeah. it's going to connect well, to yeah, the I bike path, although they say that, that it will. How do you get to these various transit locations? And transit also, you know, parking ratio, new development. Um, wasn't taken into consideration. Bicycle accommodation in and around the development. Um, the and uh, more information about the access points, the two driveways. How will they work? I think you've got to take into account uh, Thorndike Field. Its use. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, been Six o'clock. More, more than as many times. Yeah. yeah. And the buses are trying to get in there. And, and so it seemed like the way they were doing it was, well, this is what we think the uptick is going to be. Oh, it's very minimal, okay? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you, I think they have, that's why I think having TAC involved is key. To, they need to say, how does Lake Street work, Lake Street work now? Not, this is an uptick of an already disastrous condition, right. which they're not saying. Right, no, they don't seem to understand this, that at all. This won't be much more worse than a disaster. They don't finish the sentence. Right. A completely yeah. disastrous condition right yeah. now, where yeah. we don't want to, we don't want to impact it any more than. So that's what was a little shock when they said, and by the way, we might have an access in and out on Route Two. That would be great. Well, you saw that in the report. Right. So but they can't just say maybe. Yeah. Because that's, as I said in my notes, that's a huge swing factor. Yeah. It's huge. like saying, <laughs> it's. It's a make or break kind of issue that the town should be looking at. And they treat it as, oh, might, might happen. Well, then they better give us a TIAS for both conditions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what are we looking at? Right, and some real information about what do you mean it might happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any value. And people value. using it as a cut through and just right. getting off a of route two and zooming through the neighborhood. Right. So. There are really big the issues property. with the way they're handling the TIA, the uh, traffic impact. Um, I agree with the uh, understanding they're saying, oh, you get to transit so easily, it'll show us in a map. There's a map of the existing area, a colored Google map, and it sh it's kind of has a few arrows on it and shows what's, what's there now. They should show that for the proposed development. Mm -hmm. Don't even show that. Mm -hmm. They go immediately to these little um, intersection diagrams. These things, okay. which are so, what's what do you to make it? We would not allow that in a second in this board. We want to say a big site plan. How do you get from here to there, and what exactly are the new things you're doing? Then they would find that right turns are allowed on X Y Z. 
I mean, that's... Yeah, you take a left turn on the Lake Street in the middle, just, of, uh, right. how, in the middle you, of the morning. How yeah. can you even make an assessment without a decent site plan? So I noted that yes. in my notes. Yeah. Um, and the, and the uh, issue of the Route 2 is critical. So a much more sophisticated traffic impact and access, it's a, that's a must. But we can't look at it without, we shouldn't be looking at it without mm -hmm. the, the right facts. Okay, I have all that in here. Yeah. The wetlands was well trodden, that's a bad way to mm -hmm. say it, but mm -hmm. by other comments, but I found it hard to figure out where the paths were, and there are two different plans that had different paths. Oh, the paths, paths. through the paths, paths, right, through the development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the question, the development the, here's, through, no, there's through, like, um, there's there's a, the there are 11.5 acres of, of open Thank space. You. They call it open yeah. space. Yeah. What is that open space? Yeah. Is it open to the public? Is it left? Yeah. Is it open space, but it's part of the development? Yeah. Is it open to the public? Is it left as open space, but it's part of the development, not to be accessed? Does anybody Actually, know? you're absolutely right. We didn't even touch on the open space. I don't well, know. What we did on, yeah. I, I can, can, I can I summarize some of the okay. questions that came up in the comments from okay. each of you did, in the did they, did, they, did anybody answer that question? No, no. The question that we have is clarify the public access to the area of will there be structures built and by whom? What would be the function of the wetland after it's cleaned up? What does it mean to clean it up? Who owns and maintains it? And how are they, completed. I think that the, the Open Space Committee should think about that, be part of the assessment, because if you're in Thorndike Thorn Field, mm -hmm. can you get to it and use it? That would be a great amenity to have Yes. Um, all sorts of multi-purpose public, public use of public land mm -hmm. in okay. a really important and large area of our town that's open space, which is Thorndike. I mean, it would be a great amenity if they're, but I don't know, I can't tell that from the, from the Looking at the yeah, we, we could neither. That's yeah. a question that we have. That's, and that, that's amazing. That's 11.5. This could be potentially a very mm -hmm. you know, big, important thing that they should be mm -hmm. proud of in what they're doing there. And I, I can't get it from what they're showing. We couldn't either. The only mention of it is basically in the cover letter, and I think it says deeded or restricted mm -hmm. land, but it's not clear what that means. What, or what they're going to put, put into it. They make, yeah. On one page, they say something about it's it's like Sims. That's publicly accessible land. On the the Sims conservation land. Right. Well, not only that, but there's two. So there's three right. different pieces of open right. space on Sims. There's the right. upper part. There's the lower, um, right. you know, walkable mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and then there's the you know conservation land down at the down at the base. Mm -hmm. So that was. We spent a long time on, on that, and that's something that I would expect to spend a long time on. Right, that's and the lower doing. area, which is the kind of the rough land, yeah, the woods, that's more mm -hmm. comparable, it seems, to what they're talking about. They're talking about a pretty a wetland area, not a not a tailored lawn or anything like that, like right, yeah. Vista Park. But it seems it's accessible to the town, to the public. Mm -hmm. So we have that assumption, but it's not clear from the proposal. Those sound like good comments. Okay. So we have some people here who may want to make some comments. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not a public hearing, but I'd still ask that you say your name and address and keep your comments brief for us to consider. Please, you just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Beth Ann Friedman, uh, 10 Hazel Terrace. And um, I would just be interested in when they did the traffic survey, because I think a number of years ago, I looked into a traffic survey which was done in the middle of the summer, at the week when everyone's on vacation, as opposed to, you know, in the fall, in the winter, when people are back in school or going to work, and I think it would make a huge difference about the timing of when they actually did that traffic survey and what they're using as a baseline. It says April 2014. And then somewhere well, that's in the there, report, right? somewhere in there, will tell you. The I looked at it. They're they're doing them at the proper times for a traffic in, impact, and then they're extrapolating. Uh -huh. But it's okay to ask for more information. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're taking it in March, it. right? And March is supposedly is still in school. Normal. <laughs> Unless it's school the vacation. <laughs> it's still cold and. Yeah. Right. But, but we can look at what I 
other things might affect that, like the back field, or Route 2, whatever's happening. It's a school vacation. Yeah. It, usually we would in, in a special permit say, what are the basis of those kinds of analysis that you did? Why didn't you look at this intersection or that kind of thing? So that's perfectly valid. I see months. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just it just says February time of year. It doesn't say the actual time of year. Yeah. February 2014. Okay. 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 But, but yeah, I think the, that uh, the, they're going to need to update the report for sure. For many reasons. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm Jennifer Griffith. I live at 4 Edith Street, which is the epicenter of all of this and um, so I I share all your concerns and I'm glad that you have them um, but I'm really want to emphasize the safety and, and the traffic and to study the roads in the neighborhood not just Lake Street although that's going to be a nightmare too but um, you know the the amount of traffic that's there now and the number of children and the safety of all the people that park for soccer and then have to walk through and then you're going to add all these cars and you know people paying three thousand dollars a month rent i'm sorry but they're probably young people with fancy cars are going to drive fat you know i think there's just and they're going to all be coming down to enter on the corner of birch and edith and i just think that this is you know, got a lot of safety issues with, with the pedestrians. There's a lot of people that walk going to Alewife already. And as much as they might say, and everybody might say, people will walk from this development, there's going to be a lot of people driving that are going to other places to work. And, you know, they're not all going to be going to Alewife. Yeah, absolutely. That's something so, we're definitely concerned with. Um, so. Thank Safety. <laughs> Thank Anyone else? Uh, Steve Revelac, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, Sunnyside Avenue runs parallel to the Alewife Brook, which is to say uh, downstream from the uh, development that may someday be known as Thorndike Place. Um, I, a few weeks ago I heard something about the, you know, they were pl planning to work with DEP to do some sort of environmental mitigate or flood, flood mitigation um, by hearing someone mention earlier about improving the water flow into Elway Brook did a little bit of a double take um, but so I'm I don't know how the plans are different than uh, what was proposed in the last public hearing uh, but I just came to see what was going on <laughs> thank you okay. thank you all Coming in your comments. So, Jenny, where do we go from well, here? Well, that's actually a question I have for you. So, we can pull together this comment letter. Do you, how do you want to deal with the signing of the editorial? What do you, I think the last letter was signed by you. The, the, it needs to go to the. Um, it needs to go to the CBA. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. But, tomorrow. Tomorrow. I mean, if tomorrow you're, if you're comfortable with it, I think we can send them a draft with that that's been signed. Well, the meeting is at. So I mean, the day. Obviously, I can send around the final letter to you. Yeah, if you can see it for comments, that'd be fine. If I can, I can come sign it as chair. If not, we'll see. You can always send them an unsigned copy, mm -hmm. and I can sign it officially after the fact. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Authorize you. Yeah. I don't think. I think a lot of the comments were actually signed. That were sent by email. Yeah, I, I think as long as we all have a chance to see it and provide yeah. comments. Yeah. It, we'll if you capture all of what we just said. But I, yeah, yeah, I think we all need to trust you to get the essence of what we're we'll saying. So. Yes. Okay, good. All right, great. All right. I'll send it tomorrow. Work before Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Director's report. All right, so quickly, I have a little handout. It's just a quick update on some staffing project update and some upcoming meetings and events. Um, so just quickly on staffing, um, as you know, still looking for an economic development coordinator and the CDBG administrator. We actually have had interviews with candidates for both jobs. 
Um, eight, in, eight candidates were interviewed last week for the economic development job. There's a finalist, finalists will be interviewed on October 6th. Um, the CDBG administrator, we interviewed two people last week and I'm interviewing a finalist this week. And then um, Corey Beckwith, our conservation administrator, announced her resignation. It's uh, gonna be at the end of next month. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the CONCOM to post the job notice by the end of the week, hopefully fill her position as soon as possible. So that's kind of a big, big yeah. another big loss. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's been with the town for 16 years, did we yeah. figure out? Right. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I didn't write it here, but obviously you may know already we had a great town day event. Um, really interactive, engaging booth, and lots of people coming by, lots of um, people interested in the work that we were doing, support Arlington Center, support Arlington Heights. Um, Thanks to those of you who were able to come and help. I really appreciated it. Um, so that was great. We also kicked off the cultural plan project at, that, at the booth. Um, I'll give you more information about that project as I get more information from MAPC, who's consulting to us for the work. Um, and then lastly, we had the final public forum for the concept plan for Mass Ave Phase 2. That was on last uh, Thursday night, the 22nd. Um, relatively well attended meeting, but not as well attended as some of the, past, the prior meetings that we have held, um, but good input, lots of um, interest, I would say, and some debate about the concept as well as some of the key locations that we talked about. Um, the next steps are basically to get the cost estimates and then get a PNF project notification form prepared to go to MassDOT so that we can secure some funds for design and, and, and engineering. Um, and then just lastly, I'm considering a possible improvement to Whittemore Park, which happens to be one of the, uh, an A or B property, and uh, maybe submitting something to CPA for their review, contingent upon cost estimates and scope of work. Is that the one in front of Jefferson Cove? Yes. Okay. It's, it's called Whittemore Park in front of Jefferson Cove. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. 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 yeah, the one right there. Right yeah. Jefferson. Since right it's yeah. under our with purview, the, with the I thought... Maybe it would be nice well, to do something yeah. with that park. The triangle. The triangle. In front of Dallin. It's yeah. the park right in yep. front of the Jefferson Cutter yep. House, which is where the Dallin Museum is. By the way, that yes. looks like that came up great. And the Jefferson Cutter House was, yeah, that very nice. real nice. It's great to see. Okay. Um, and then I just listed some upcoming meetings. We have kind of a, ba a very packed agenda on October 17th. We've got two uh, public hearings, three public hearings, two for special town meeting warrant articles, and then one for Cafe Nero, which is a proposed cafe coming to 319 Broadway. Where's that? CBS. Former CBS. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, those and are that's nice. It. And then I brought you actually a copy of the presentation if you were interested. From the Mass Ave Streetscape Project. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh great. Thanks, and then Jim. also, um, there's an upcoming citizen planner training collaborative schedule that if any of you are interested in attending, you can attend any of these workshops. So I thought I'd pass that out as well. That's all that I have. Okay. Was you. there a next meeting? The 17th. That is the next meeting. That is the next meeting, okay. yeah. Okay. Is that seven or something? Hey, did you want to do seven? Because I could do seven. So will you, this is the question is, uh -huh. when did we advertise the public hearings for? Uh, I'll check. Okay. So uh, if, I think it was seven. If we can meet at seven, yes, that would be great. We'll, have three well, even if the public hearings don't start, we could get minutes and everything out of the building. Yeah, we can do that's business true. at 7. Okay. All right, let's meet at 7. I'll we'll confirm that. Okay. Good. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Uh, minutes from August 22nd. They look good to me. Got everybody's name correct? They look good. That's, <laughs> that's always the big issue. One item, just if yes. you say correspondence, is that what's documents were received or yes documents received exactly. should it be called documents received we've called it correspondence really so in that the means, past. means it was it was a correspond it was correspondence to the arb that was reviewed in the meeting that was reviewed at the meeting yeah so they don't you don't put it in documents that is there another section that says no but i can add one if you think that would be helpful it's okay with whatever you normally do i just want to make sure it's, it's a document that was yeah. part of the proceedings so the right below it says written comments received from okay um 
I was kind of following the pattern from the past. No problem. But Just check out. Glad to put it as documents received. Whatever suits you. You know, I, the only thing I guess you could do to is down below when you uh, when Mr. Lorraine made his comment, he gave it. He gave us those comments. I think at that point in time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could, That's when he handed them to us. You could say he he, uh, he handed uh, written comments to the uh, board as well for okay. its consideration. to approve the minutes of uh, August 22nd. August 2nd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything? That's it. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.